I had a really sleepless night last night, raging headache, no idea why, I usually travel really well. Hopefully I will stay awake through my presentation, hopefully the audience will. أكاديمية الاجتماعية الشركاء المحليين والإقليميين والدوليين. The women who are leaders for 90 years longer than any of the IEPs. We want individuals who are grounded in these values so that she or he can attain the level of integrity, service, and civic responsibility that a society needs. That's the end of the first session. My session's next. Uh, but before that, there's a half hour break. Everyone's looking at the NGO exhibition and various other exhibitions. <laughs> This is why business is such a crucial part of the next 10 to 20 years. Because business is unique among social organisations that we have created as a species. Whereas the nation state, the family, whatever level of grouping you tend to draw around yourself, we like to hide away from difficult facts, we like to um, only see things that reinforce our view of the world, and this is what we all do. None of us are immune from this. Psychologists have shown that this is how we're built. But businesses have to confront harsh realities or else they go out of business. Make the commitment today, if you haven't already, to be a member of that group, to work out how you live a life of value and express that through the work that you do. And then the rest of today will simply be an exploration of some of the details of how that can work. Thank you. At that moment when your energy level is up or down, a window of opportunity opens for change to happen. We try and create that by using shock tactics. We call it energy wave disruption. We are moving from profit to purpose. It's not just about how much money did you make, how much is your bottom line. That's not the only significant indicator of success. It's also, what is your business's purpose? The conference is just finishing off. A few people have left, but considering it's been such a long day and it's actually gone on about an hour longer than it was originally scheduled to, it's pretty good that lots of people have stayed. Overall, lots of different subjects tackled, lots of enthusiasm, really good event. <laughs> Today after the conference, in about an hour, I'm going to be meeting with the organisers, CSR Lebanon, to talk about a few things. So before I did that, I thought I'd quickly pop out and have a, a look and see what Beirut has to offer. Here at Layla Cafe with CSR Lebanon, who are going to force me um, to eat some traditional Lebanese food, which of course it didn't have to be forced at all. We had a conversation on the way here about how superior every single cuisine is to British food, uh, which I can testify to. So I'm really looking forward to uh, being in uh, Khaled's hands as to what I should be eating this lunchtime. No, everything is fine. <laughs> Once we pass, he goes, you know the good thing about iPhones? I'm like, what's that? He's like, they're never deleted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, okay. yeah, what has to happen in Lebanon for CSR to take the next step? First of all, we need the president, which is uh, hopefully next Monday we have it. Yes. We need political and uh, security stability in the countries. And the most important, we need the leadership. We need a businessman who have the passion and who have the leadership 
to believe in sustainability and in corporate responsibility. And I believe people who owns like this behind us, these boats, yes. they are must be think differently and think about the importance of uh, CSR for their business for their businesses first. One of the big themes through the day was the role of women and the leadership of women and the emerging role of, of women in business. What for you was the takeout? Because at the end of the day, we have so many social issues scattered across the country, and what we need these we need we, we need these women to do is um, to understand that without collaboration, without agreeing on something common, we are we not, we're not going to get that far. So. Um, they need to be champions of change, and I know that they have the confidence and the ability to do so, to do that. Finally got back home, full day of travelling. Just a couple of things that I'd note for those of you who are still watching. First of all, I've done a lot of speaking over the last 10, 20 years on this subject and it's easy to take for granted. But to go to a new place, a country you've never been before with issues and problems and characters and life that you've never experienced before. Thank you CSI Lebanon for inviting me. Thank you to all of the people who were in the audience and gave such warm appreciation, who came and spoke to me afterwards and talked to me about what you're doing, talked to me about the audiences that you got that you'd like to get the same message to, all of those sorts of things. It's a real privilege. In yesterday's video when I talked about three things that I'd learned, I think I've now added a fourth. And one of the things that I saw in Lebanon, and, and having seen it there, I have seen it elsewhere. I mean, this is a, a standard, I just hadn't recognised it before. When you've got an emerging economy with businesses who are not that sophisticated on corporate social responsibility, they're growing into it, they're exploring, this is all new territory for them. When that happened here 20 years ago, businesses started with key issues that were most important and relevant to them. And they came together and they collaborated on those and they took one baby step after another and it got stronger and stronger and more powerful. And then, further down the line, people started to create tools that started to add layers of complexity, you know, quality standards. The thing is that in countries that are even now just emerging, they look out there to see what are the tools that are out there would show you how to do this stuff. And so they start with those tools. And I actually think that's probably not a helpful thing for them to do because they're overly complicated for the first steps that they need to take. It's for countries where there isn't a huge amount of self-confidence that they know how to do these things that they start looking for these tools and say, okay, well, this is what the world community says we should be doing. And actually, it's okay to start where you are. It's okay to think big picture. It's okay to do the one thing brilliantly well before you start trying to do the 20 things. So I now have four things that I've learned. Hope this has been of interest. It's going to end now.